Hello and welcome to the I Am Woman Project, where every week we have deep thought-provoking and interesting conversations with thought leaders, change instigators, rule breakers and creative minds who think differently, sparking creativity and inspiration. Our special guests on our show cover a variety of topics just for you and they share their personal stories to inspire, motivate and empower you, our listener. The I Am Woman podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at www.catherineplano.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. Today we have Lisa Barnett, the expansive infinite soul. What if there was a simple tool that could help you release anger, grief and old negative emotions, one that offered physical and emotional healing? In Lisa Barnett's best-selling new book, From Questioning to Knowing, 73 Prayers to Transform Your Life, she offers the readers a straightforward tool that opens your heart and allows more love and abundance to flow into your life. Jack Canfield, New York Times bestselling co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, said this about Lisa's book. It's no accident, but rather divine timing, that Lisa has written this book now. By simply reading a prayer, this book can transform you almost effortlessly from where you are to where you feel loved and supported. Lisa is the founder of Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom, an internationally recognized school where students can learn to access their soul wisdom and guidance from their personal Akashic records. Lisa has more than 25 years of experience in the spiritual healing community and is a master Akashic channel. So now it's time to channel your attention into this amazing human being. Enjoy. Well, good morning. We have Lisa Barnett this morning from a company called Akashic Knowing. Welcome to I Am Woman Project. Thank you, Catherine. I'm thrilled to be here with you today. And I should say it's good morning here in Australia, but what time is it in your end of the world? Um, It's early afternoon of the day before. (laughs) Okay, so it's actually Friday and it's our Saturday here in Australia. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So um, for our listeners, Lisa, we were having a juicy conversation about Akashic Records and I thought we'd probably um, better start recording because there was some really good content. And I guess for our listeners, let's talk about a little bit about what is Akashic Records. And uh, before we do that, actually, uh, tell us your story. Let's unpack Lisa Barnett. Okay. So let's see. I, you know, I usually like to dive all the way back about 57 years. <laughs> Oof, I think it's more now. Anyway, um, to when I was three years old, because my life has kind of hinged on a, a um a memory I had when I was three years old. So my memory is of looking at my hands and thinking, holy moly, I'm trapped in a body again. And it was a bit of a panic, I have to say. And I said to my mother, as best I could at three, is I want to go back. (laughs) I would like to go home, please. Right? I probably didn't say it that way way. But my mother said, you are home, dear. And that was the moment that launched my life, I would say. So I think that quite a few people have those unusual um, before life memories when they're very little. And some of us carry them with us. And some probably forget them. But it started my spiritual journey. 
So when I was about 13 years old, finally old enough to go into the library and read whatever I wanted to read, I started reading everything spiritual I could get my hands on. And I was living in California in the, that was the late 60s, 68, 69, and um, on into the 70s through my high school years. I read all the spiritual books, and there were some fascinating ones coming out. At that point, um, Eastern philosophy was just coming to the West. Some of the great gurus and transcendental meditation was coming to the West, and uh, Carlos Castaneda were, were, wrote his books, and so lots of fascinating information. So it started my life path and my knowingness. It gave me the ability to say, oh, thank heavens I'm not insane. There's other people who, <laughs> you know, think the way I think, that believe in reincarnation. And, and I, my favorite book was called Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Monroe. And he spoke about astral travel and and, um, you know, parallel universes, and it was just, you know, fabulous. So, so that's really where I started. And then um, a little bit later in life, what happened was that I was um, studying with an amazing clairvoyant intuitive healer. And I realized at that point that, that really being a healer was my path. So after, you know, 15 years in um, advertising, I said, hmm, something is amiss. I'm miserable and sick. I better figure out what's going on. And, and I did. And so I looked really deeply into all the information again that I could find and was guided to really uh, an amazing intuitive who said, but dear, you're a healer, you know? And I said, no, I'm in advertising. <laughs> and she laughed at me and said, well, <laughs> that's what you're doing for a living right now, but your soul is a healer. So that again, you know, our pivotal points in our life are fascinating. And I think one of the challenges is to hear those messages and to follow those messages. Mm. And so I was blessed to do that and to follow that, you know, you're, you're really a healer message because it rang so true in my, in my life. And uh, the fact that, that um, she did a three hour reading for me because none of her other clients showed up was all of the interesting pieces of, you know, um, divine timing and the universe aligning for me to get a real true message through. So I woke up to my soul work and blessedly have been on that path ever since. So for the last 20, 25 years, I've been on this spiritual healing path. Mm. I do want to uh, speak a little bit about divine timing. So do you believe that everything happens at a right time? There is a time for, uh, you know, something to come to life or come to light? You know, it's an interesting question and I would say yes and no <laughs> because because I'm always talking to the Akashic Records, and, and I know we'll have to flip back and talk a little more about that, but um, what they say is, is that nothing is written in stone. Our lives are not predetermined or predestined, but there is such a thing as divine timing. And it, again, is the way the universe comes together to support us. So it's a little bit less about um, this is going to happen in January, you know, and it's more about when all of the support systems align, that's the highest and best time for this to come together and to be able to present that or bring that into the world. Mm. The reason I ask is, you know, from, I guess, from my learnings over time, there's been different masters, different gurus, different teachers who have given me different information. Um, and some was very similar to what you're saying. There is no, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, 
destination like my end date will be you know at the age of 90 and I will turn into light um, but then there's others that say no it's 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 you co- create your path you create your destination yes there are certain lessons of where, that we must learn here as a soul this time or this round um, but uh, the time aspect is depending on what you do with the time is that correct yes yeah That's exactly how I receive it because we come here to this beautiful earth because we want to have the free will. And so that is kind of number one in the, in the world. So what we do as a soul before we come into a body is we write a soul plan and that plan will include these are the talents that I'd like to share and express in the world. Um, These are some of the soul contracts I'd like to have or create, you know, with family members. Maybe I write you know, three soul contracts to have children, which may or may not come to fruition. I might write a half a dozen or a dozen soul contracts to have significant partners because again, it's free will and timing. And so you may not bump into eight of those 12 people that you wrote contracts with because of where you've chosen to live um, or the, the combination timing between them and you know and you and your both of your free will right because it's more complicated than just your choice so we are smart souls and we <laughs> we hedge our bets and so <laughs> instead of having one soul partner or one soul contract for a significant other We make sure if we want to have a partner, there's many, many different souls that could help and support us in a life or that could be there to help us to learn certain lessons and to grow in certain ways. So not all of the soul contracts we write are support contracts. Some of them are to complete some old karma, to learn some lessons, to grow in different ways spiritually. Um, And those might be, you know, some that are more challenging or, you know, what we would say more painful because there's more emotion attached. And some of them are really beautiful, kind of simple, just supportive um, contracts. And that could be your life partner or a parent or a or a child even, or a best friend or a boss. So they show up in many, many different places. And again, we're not going to have all of the soul contracts we write. We're not going to finish every lesson we think we might want to learn. Um, but we do the best we can. Mm. And so if we don't complete all our lessons in this uh, lifetime, does do we need to then come back and learn and complete our lessons? Yes. Yeah. You know, Mm. what the Akashic Masters say (laughs) is that most of us, and this is a bit of an appalling, shocking number to people, um, most of us live somewhere between 400 and 800 lives here on Earth. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So it takes a little longer. It's not one or two or five or 10 lives. We're looking 400, 500, 600 lives because... You know, if we just think about um, our lives and, you know, it might be a little more challenging if life is going pretty well, if things are pretty easy for you, you're probably an older soul and you've got a lot of this done and you've already done 600 lives and you're almost good to go. This could be your last life, you know, but sometimes we look at, um, other friends or people in our families and we see them struggle and they're upset and they're angry and they're blaming everyone for their troubles. And you can just get that sense that they're not really learning some important lessons and those will probably come up again and maybe again and again in different lifetimes. So it starts to get to be easy to see how we can live so many lives because so much to do so many lessons so much growth so many gifts and talents we want to share so some of it's about learning and growing and a lot of it's also about being of service and sharing our gifts and being the teachers or the healers 
um, the loving souls that we are, and really expressing not not particularly in a spiritual way. We can be teachers and healers and work in IT for a um, you know a school system. You know, it doesn't have to be a spiritual kind of job to do your spiritual work. It may be about sharing your insights and your love and being kind and supportive and compassionate. You may be the person that everyone um, comes to uh, ask advice from. And, and that can be your gift and your talent to be there for people. Yeah. So it's interesting in the way that um, it doesn't always look like we might think it's going to look. And certainly um, there's so much to do that it would be hard to do it all in one life. Well, Lisa, I have so many questions. So I know our listeners are sitting there going, and hang on, they're speaking about Akashic Records. What are Akashic Records? But before we go there... I do have a couple of questions in regards to what we're talking about. So from what I understand, we do have, we're all here in this lifetime to search for our purpose or find our purpose and tap into those talents and those gifts. So um, is it fair to say that we do have certain gifts or talents to share with the world? And um, it's a matter of uh, understanding what those gifts and talents are, and that's our purpose, as to why we are here today. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, one of the ways I like to explain purpose is that often um, it shows up really more as a sort of uh, bigger idea, more of an archetype than a job description. So what the Akashic masters always say is that, you know, um, we're not a human resource department. This isn't going to HT and saying, you know, what am I good at? Is it, you know, a secretary or a computer analyst, right? <laughs> they're, not, they're not really gifts in those ways per se. Many of us come to be of service. That is a gift and a talent and a sole purpose. And for one person, that may be um, being a nurse or a doctor. And for someone else, that may be the mother or father. And for someone else, it might be the the waitress or the, the food server. So being of service or being a, it, it can also, you know, be um, in so many millions of different service sorts of positions, right? And it can also be very spiritual. You could think of that as the, um, the wise uh, woman or man. But those also connect into what we would call an archetype of the, um, the sage. So you may be a sage, which is a wise woman or man who is here to teach the bigger picture of the universe. Or maybe you have the energy of the king or the queen. And so these are uh, much more archetypical because those people are going to be the movers and the shakers. They may be the, the, the mayor or the president. They may be in politics or they may be the you know CEO of a business. So when we look at our records, we look at soul purpose in many different ways. So it's part of the big picture soul. Plus, there is what I call soul lineage. And that is all of these lifetimes in which you um, came to, say, do a certain sort of work. And you were very successful in that soul endeavor, in that lives and de life endeavor. So an example of that might be um, a person who has many, many different lives as, uh, let's call the, the I'm going to go with the server, which is interesting. That's the one the Akashic Masters are saying. Mm -hmm. But they're saying some of those lives you were a midwife. You were the, the nurse or the doctor or the healer. 
Mm. Maybe you were even the acupuncturist. And in some of those lives, you were the mother. And some of those lives, you were the great mother, which means you didn't have your own children, but you mothered the village and the children of the village. Maybe you even ran the school. So that could all be many different lifetimes in which you were of service to your community in a variety of ways. And many of those are part of your gifts and talents. Mm, yep. So does that make sense? Oh, it's absolutely. Much- absolutely makes sense. Because it's, it's the reason I was asking is there was another lady we had on the show who's an astrologist and uh, she was speaking about uh, tapping into your gifts. We all have this one gift that we come here with and it's about uh, tapping into what exactly is that. Like you said, it, it's always been of service, but doing what exactly. Uh, but the thing that, they, that she did speak about, there is an end date. Uh, so uh, from an astrology perspective, you can see, and the way that I see it, um, because I'm studying astrology as well, there's, it's almost like this is the framework, but there's freedom within the framework. So these are the influences around you, and this is where free will comes into play. It's what you do with it and how you play it out. Is that how you right. see it? Uh, yes, I would say, I would absolutely um, say yes. So um, I, I'm not too sure about the end date part. Mm. I'm, I'm not an astrologer, so yeah. I'm not quite sure how that plays out. Um, and what the other thing I would say is that I believe that we are so much more um, powerful and multidimensional because I spend all this time in these huge records which are phenomenal, and we have many gifts and talents. So again, let me just give you a quick example, because um, now I've written two books now. So one of my apparently gifts and talents, though I would not particularly believe it as a person, but obviously it seems to be true, is, is an author. Mm-hmm. So when I started to write my books, when the Akashic Masters asked me to write these books, I went back into all my past lives in which I was a published author, in which I wrote with ease, in which I was a prolific author, um, in which I didn't have any um, any um, writing blocks. <laughs> so I literally went and reclaimed all of my writing author gifts. Because it was a bit of a challenge for me. I, I was um, I was the stay-at-home mom for a long time. I have four kids. So I thought of myself as a stay-at-home mom. Like, what the heck? I'm, but the, you know, <laughs> you're asking me to what? Like, I know anything about this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it turns out I have some of those gifts. And um, both of my books are number one bestsellers. And I have people tell me all the time, um, my because my newest book, From Questioning to Knowing, has 73 prayers that I've channeled from the Akashic Records. And I have people write to me and tell me that these prayers are changing their life. And they're so thankful. And I just, of course, thank the Akashic Masters because I didn't write them. I But I apparently have a good gift as a channel. Mm. So, you know, writing, channeling, um, I have lovely, lovely, sweet, loving children. Um, And so I must have some talent as a mother, (laughs) right? Uh, Maybe not the greatest cook, but great love. So we have way more than one. And I think when we start to worry that we have one purpose and one talent and one, um, say, soulmate, when we feel that life is finite, that we have to find the right thing or we're going to just blow it, um, that causes great stress in our lives. And the Akashic Masters say, no, you're way more expansive. You write, you know, 12 um, contracts to have significant partners and to have kids if you want or not. Some people don't want to have mm-hmm. kids and so they don't write those. Um, you know, to utilize these different gifts at different times in your life also. Mm-hmm. I didn't need to, to write when I was young. I didn't start writing until I was in my 40s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that makes a whole, that makes sense. And I I agree with you, the whole end date thing that never really sits with me uh, because I believe that we and just from my uh, some of the experiences that have happened lately and in the past, that I think that sometimes it's almost um, you know I've seen people almost being given a second chance in life, or uh, that sliding door 
uh, scenario where they're going through a current situation and it's almost like something takes place or they're at the right place at the right time and and it, it sh- completely shifts. And it's almost like I see it happen. It's like a transformation takes place is probably the best way that I, that I explain it. Uh, Lisa, before we go any further, as I, I'm sitting here, I've got so many questions. Let's talk about Akashic Records for our listeners because I, I know they're like sitting there probably hanging out to hear what are Akashic Records. <laughs> Absolutely. So the simple explanation is, is that every person is, of course, a soul having a human experience and your soul Um, has a record. So from the time you individuate from source, and the way I understand it, because I look at at these records is almost infinite, they're very, very expansive, that from the time you individuate from source, which may have been millions or billions of earth years ago, everything you have ever been or done is recorded in your personal Akashic record. Now, I love that they often show us the records in a way that makes it kind of easy for the human mind to to get it. So let me just paint this picture for you. Mm. So imagine that you're standing in front of a beautiful ancient stone building with big carved wooden doors and the doors are thrown open and there is a beautiful being of light and everyone's beings of light or record keepers are going to appear a little bit different because this is part of you and your soul path but just imagine this beautiful energy being inviting you in and you walk up these marble stairs and into this big room and you look around and the walls are filled with books and your record keeper says these are the books of your life each one of these books represents a lifetime you've had whether it was here on earth a life in between on another planet or plane or dimension. These are the stories of your soul. And you look over and you see, oh, look, there's another room through that archway. And you walk back to the back of this big library room. And of course, I love to have a nice fire in the fireplace and a comfy chair so I can pull out a book and sit down and study it. But there's a, another door and it goes out into a garden. And there's a beautiful garden with more healing energy. And there's a river of forgiveness that flows through your garden. And this is the library of your soul. And each person's library is specific to them. You have your own Akashic record keepers or beings of light that keep your records. So you have your very own personal librarian that is there to help you to pick the right books, to ask the answers that will take you to a place that is helpful to reclaim some past life information and memories that will support your gifts and talents in this life. And all of this is just really waiting for you to access it. This is your library. And it's held and stored in the etheric cloud of the unified field of source. So it's not any place in a physical realm. We connect to the Akashic Records through our hearts. And I teach people to do this in the workshops that I share. And the record keepers really remind us so often that they are here to support us. And they love, love, love to connect. 
Mm. As you're taking me through it, I had a visualization and I was going through it as you were uh, taking us through it. So for our listeners, if, if we want to tap into a particular talent, like you explained to us before, for writing, if you want to be a prolific author, or if you want to tap into some information, uh, is that the thing that we could do? We could actually go through almost like a visualization or a, a get ourselves into a meditative state where we're going into our heart and visualize this and actually ask permission from our librarian. Uh, could we actually have some information about writing, for example, or information about you know creative designs, whatever it is for uh, our listeners? Is that correct? <laughs> Yes, it absolutely is. And um, the first book I wrote, which is called The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records, is a guidebook that teaches you how to access your own Akashic Records with a five-step wisdom prayer system that the Akashic Record Keepers have given me. So that was the first book they asked me to write, it is The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. So people can learn to do this in a simple way. Because many of us, for, for years, I think that people have um, accessed the records through guided meditations, and they have these experiences, and they go into the garden, and, and I do a, a nice guided meditation where I take people through the river of forgiveness to clear and release some of our old pain and trauma. But I find that for most people, it's... it's um, more complicated in a way to go through a guided meditation and then be able to get um, solid information and to get, you know, um, real answers kind of through the guided meditation um, style. And so the, the Akashic Record Keepers have given us, like I said, a five-step wisdom prayer system. They've given me vibrational keys, which are simple prayers, to open the doors to your library and I teach people how to go in and talk to your record keepers, your librarians. And so it's one of the things that the, um, the Akashic record keepers asked, like I said, for me to do for humanity. So the book is the first step. And then of course I teach people to do this in online courses and in-person courses because I find for most of us, it's not true for everyone. I've got lots of people read my book and they email me and they say, wow, this is so amazing. I'm talking to my record keepers. And many of us like to have our hands held a little bit, have somebody hold the vibration of the Akashic field for us and answer our questions and help us to believe that we're really accessing this you know, divine information. And so I teach people also in workshops how to do it, to make it easy because I'm relatively linear in a kind of strange sort of way, which is why the Akashic Master said, let's do a five-step wisdom prayer system. Let's, you know, <laughs> let's make this simple and clear for people. Oh, absolutely. So could we actually also tap into our archetype? Because you were talking about the different archetypes. Is that something we can actually get from our Akashic Records? Yes, absolutely. So it's another good question. So part of the... Um the fascinating thing with our Akashic records and the truth of who we are as souls is that we are very ancient. And so there's so much information in there. And when we learn to access it by opening our own records and talking to our record keepers, we can say, so what is the, you know, archetype I'm expressing here in this life or archetypes? Sometimes when I do readings for clients, I'll often get two or three kind of combined archetypes. I find that we're way more complicated than a lot of people give us credit for. And, um, but we can ask these kind of questions and, you know, we can ask about, um, past lives in which we had a specific gift and talent. So, you know, of course I use the author one because it's simple, but you could use ones where you were a healer or where you were um, a teacher or, you know, maybe you were an architect. Uh, arch architect. I'm, I'm seeing uh, uh, um, some ancient buildings with flying buttresses, hmm. right? So that came from somewhere, right? Um, 
and we actually spend lives in other realms and dimensions. So it's pretty fascinating. And, and there's so much we can learn about ourselves as these huge expansive souls. Mm. So could we also tap into our karma? Because you mentioned karma before. And, uh, you know, depending on what kind of life we have lived in the past, we sometimes, it's not just about lessons, but it's also about karma. Is that something we could tap into in this lifetime to fix it up? Yes, absolutely. One of the big soul lessons I see um, most people have some uh, variety. Sometimes we have one big karmic um, piece that we're working on. Some of us have a couple of smaller karmic pieces. They show up a little bit differently. Um, and so it's all about learning and growth. The way the Akashic Masters talk about karma is that there is, it's not right or wrong, good or bad. It's not about punishment. Often some of the old ancient wisdoms talk about, you know, this is like a punishment for doing something wrong. And the record keepers say that this is just all about learning. And one of the lovely things about working in the Akashic Records is that these beings of light are pure source energy. There is no judgment. There's unconditional love, compassion, joy, laughter. They can be very funny. Often the way they describe things to me are, are you know, funny stories. But they've given us a beautiful prayer of forgiveness to help us to heal and clear karma. Because they say that forgiveness is a huge piece in, in seeing the truth of who we are as divine souls, not just bad people or good people or right or wrong people, but that we're truly divine souls, no matter how we are showing up in the world. And that when we can start to see, say, um, that we had a very challenging relationship. Say someone had a, um, a marriage and the, say the spouse was very abusive and they you know, left the marriage um, and they got themselves safe, but they're holding a judgment and would really love revenge. And, and when we feel these ways, when we're angry or hateful or, or you know, really um, hang on to our hurt or want revenge, we blame somebody for, you know, all the troubles of our lives, you know, you ruined my life, you know, it's all your fault that, you know, everything has gone wrong in my life. We're stuck in a really low level energy. And that is really a kind of a will turn into a karmic pattern for us if we are not able to start to see the bigger picture, get conscious about the pa the fact that um, that these are actually life choices and learning choices. So when we can move out of blame and judgment and realize that our soul wanted to learn something here, and it may be about finishing um, a pattern where you were an abuser in another life. Mm -hmm. And so we come and we do the other side of the story and we're in an abusive relationship. And the, um, the point of doing both sides, playing both sides of the story, is to come to understand, to forgive, to move forward into unconditional love so that we're no longer triggered or trapped in that story. Mm, I can so relate to that, Lisa. And I think that, and that's one of the things I talk about all the time. It's the, um, it's when you come from that kind of mindset that I chose this life, I chose this family, I chose my parents, I chose these relationships. Uh, and I would not be the person I am today without all of those learnings. You come from, it's, it's light. That's probably, it's, it just feels like there's no heaviness about it, but not, it took me years to come to that. Don't get me wrong. But I know that once upon a time, you know, many moons ago, I would say that I was probably in that victim mentality. Uh, but to pull myself out of it, I had to come to the realization at a very young age 
that I needed to, I chose these lessons and I needed to learn these lessons. So I can really relate to what you're saying. Yes, and I would certainly not say that it's easy. This is, again, why most of us take, you know, 5, 10, 20 lives to figure these things out. And so, it, you know, it's um, holding great compassion for ourselves and self-love and understanding that we're in process, we're on a path, it is a journey, right, not a destination. And as we forgive ourselves for maybe choosing that, <laughs> sometimes that's where we have to start is forgiving ourselves for picking, you know, these relationships or these parents or this situation. And then we go, can go forward. And as we become conscious, and to me that word means is as we can really start to be aware and open our eyes and see all the facets and levels and layers that make up our story, then it becomes much easier for us to understand it, work through it, forgive it, clear it, make a different choice. Mm. And this is, again, one of the great gifts that I see the Akashic Record keepers and, and this wisdom and information from the Akashic Records, this is what they give us, is they give us the help, the support, the ability to see and to understand in this, you know, really big picture sort of way, you know, why I might have chosen these people or this situation or why I'm stuck in this pattern. And they're usually complicated. It's, it's again, you know, um, uh, rarely one answer. People will, uh, I, I do Akashic Record readings and healings for clients also. So I'm, I work with a, a, you know, a half a dozen clients every week and, and um, people will often come and they'll say, you know, I have some money blocks. I don't know what it is, but what's my money block? And it's, and <laughs> I'll ask the Akashic, their Akashic Records and they'll say, well, there's some childhood hidden beliefs that the parents thought that money was really bad. And then there's, you've taken on that, you know, religious belief. And then you've got those past lives in which you were, um, uh, you know, a priest. And a, and a guru, and you took vows of poverty, and then there were those other lives in which, you know, you, uh, people died because you treated them so poorly with all of your money, and then there's the ancestral energy, and then, you know, on and on. So, um, we're complicated. Mm. <laughs> so, as you're speaking through, like, ancestors, can you cut the cord that connects you to that kind of energy? Um, I would, yes. Um, I probably work a little different because we're working in the Akashic Records. So again, imagine that we have gone back into the library and we've said to the Akashic Masters, can you please show me these lives in which I took vows of poverty? And say they pull five books off the shelf. And I say, I would like to clear and release these vows of poverty. They no longer serve me. I, I'm not a priest or a monk or a nun in this life. I'm a businesswoman on a spiritual path, but it's a business also, right? So I would like to release these old vows. And our Akashic masters, the way I see it, is they would say, the, the image they're giving me right now, is they would rip that vow out of the book. The whole life is valid. It was a beautiful spiritual life, but we can delete the vow because that's stuck outside of time and space and doesn't serve you. And so here's my Akashic record keepers and they're going through my six books, ripping out the vows and they put them in, they pull out their little match and they burn them up and the vows are released. And so through this realm, the Akashic records are stored in source energy. So the highest vibration that anyone can access is source. And so when these beautiful beings of light are assisting us in clearing, releasing, and healing, this energy, it is done with such grace and ease. 
And so, you know, again, this is one of the beautiful gifts. Um, so we're not just, you know, kind of pulling that cord out because vows aren't cords. Vows are vows. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so they're a different thing. They're like a different um you know, piece of information. And so we actually clear them in a different sort of way. And now because I've cleared these six vows from other lifetimes, I want to be able to go in there and fold time so that I can reclaim the positive energy and wisdom from those lives and reshift that energy so that my, my here and now body energy field is filled with the higher vibration that we can now hold that is uh, without vows of poverty. So people can often feel that shift immediately in their body when I do this sort of healing for them. Mm, I like that. And I, I like the taking and like just ripping the page out of the, the book. And I like that because it's, it makes, um, I'm a visual person. So I was thinking, how do you remove that and make that shift from uh, removing those money blocks to maybe having more and reclaiming that wealth consciousness? Uh, so for me, that, that was uh, um, a good visual. So thank you for that. So, Lisa, as we wrap up the show, we always love to ask our woman of inspiration to pick one word that best describes her personal brand. So what would be that one word for you? Uh, I would say expansion. Mm. It is all really very much about being multidimensional and expansive. And I think that that is um, one of the great gifts that we are able to access now mm. in the world. So Lisa, when you say multidimensional, it, is that something that you could also tap into? Can you actually tap into yourself within a different dimension with the Akashic uh, Records or through a visualization maybe? You know, the way I think I could answer that best is to say that um, part of our multidimensionality is that we are so uh, multi-sensory and so much more expansive in other realms than just this physical realm. So as we start to learn and become aware and conscious of that, it definitely becomes much easier to start to see that as a, a truth instead of, um, you know, instead of thinking that we're just 3D here, right? Mm -hmm. That we're just, you know, um, the, the senses that we have, that we have so many more senses and so much more um, dimension. So in that way, and then of course, um, one of the things I love to teach my students in my workshops is to be able to travel out outside of time and space so that we can um, you know, do that, remember the past, reclaim the past, shift into these um, other energies, as well as be able to um, sometimes go into the, I'm going to uh, kind of parallel worlds and universes in other worlds. So all, there's phenomenal, tons of phenomenal energy and information out there as we start to access it. Mm. So I know for our listeners, because they, they, I'm curious, and I bet you they're curious as well, as to how does one travel into another time? <laughs> you know, it's actually a pretty simple um it's a simple process and probably the easiest way I can explain it because, you know, part of what we're doing is we're learning to um, move out of this dimension into the high vibration and dimension of the Akashic field. And then with that ability, we then can become much more fluid and we can see and if we can start to see and feel and know past life stories, we can start to go there energetically. 
Mm. And so we've literally gone outside of time and space. And so when I um, teach my students this or do this as a healing technique for my clients, I literally am going into their past life, healing that pain and that trauma, releasing the vows. Um, many of my clients are, are uh, light workers. And so what I often will see is that they have um, – blocks around stepping out in the world and sharing their gifts because they've been killed for them. And so when if I ask, okay, show me these lives in which they've died for their gifts, and I can go back into those, clear that physical pain and trauma, the emotional um, pain of being killed, uh, the spiritual pain, which is often connected to to this energy where we felt like we were doing our sole purpose, maybe we were in a really spiritual life, and how could we be forsaken and killed for our gifts? So we actually clear and heal all of these layers and levels of that trauma that's stuck, and when I can clear that, I can see that past life transform. Mm. So I have seen people who have lost their heads, <laughs> like by, you know, being beheaded for, for being a, a witch, say, um, when I go through in the records and clear that energy, then um, I will literally see them stand up and walk away. They're like whole again. Mm. So we feel that in our in our bodies. We are able to reclaim that energy and that wisdom. And now that fear of getting killed for speaking our truth is is gone in this time too. Mm, oh, wow. I could relate to that. That's another conversation altogether. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> So, Lisa, the other thing we love to do to, uh, as we wrap up the show is ask our woman uh, uh, of inspiration. I was going to say of expansion, actually. That's why I was like, oh, I've got the word expansion. Uh, a woman of inspiration to leave our listeners with three golden nuggets. So what shiny three golden nuggets would you like to leave for our listeners today? Hmm. <laughs> um, hmm. You are more ancient, wise, and powerful than you believe, usually. So you are wise and ancient, and the Akashic Masters wish for you to step into that power and wisdom for yourself. So another one is um, you are here to do great good in the world and trust your gifts. Often our gifts, our talents are part of what comes so easily to us. And so we ignore them instead of embracing them. And so the Akashic Masters are saying, embrace your gifts, share your gifts. You're here to offer them to the world. And the third one they're saying is to speak your truth. You are safe. We are, thankfully, uh, pretty safe in in our world, most of our world, not all of it, but most of the world. And so they wish us to speak our truth and be the compassionate, bright light that you came to be. Hmm. I'm digesting all of that and I am like lit up like a Christmas tree right now. That was divine. Thank you so much, Lisa. I could relate to all of those. I personally felt like they were for me, but I'm sure our listeners feel the same way, really uh, tapped into my heart. So thank you so very much. So how can our listeners find you? The easiest way to find me is on my main website, which is akashicknowing.com. 
And on my website, you will find three free gifts if you would like to go there to www.akashicknowing.com. You will see in the right hand column. Um, more information about my newest book, From Questioning to Knowing, The 73 Prayers to Transform Your Life. And just below the picture of the book, you will see the three free gifts that you can download. There's two beautiful meditations. One hooks you up um, with a golden uh, column of light, hooks you up to your Akashic Records. Another one is a, a amazing meditation to create very strong, clear boundaries so you can be guided, guarded, and protected as you go through your life. And the third gift is an ebook of prayers of self-love to help us all to move into this place of loving ourselves so that um, it becomes easier for us to share our gifts with the world when we can love ourselves first. So free gifts there. You'll see information about Akashic Record consultations and healings. You'll see information about classes that I teach online and in person. Um, lots, of, lots of information. So you know, check it out, spend some time. There's, you know, lots to read. <laughs> so enjoy yourself and, and um, yeah, let yourself expand through that process. Wow, Lisa, thank you so much for all these divine gifts. And I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, sharing your wisdom, your insight, and really bringing to light what Akashic Records are all about. So thank you so much for your time and energy. Oh, my pleasure. It was just lovely to share this with you. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. That brings us to the end of another episode. I hope you enjoyed the show as it is my mission to reach out and inspire as many individuals like you. And one of the best ways to help us achieve this goal is by giving us a good review on iTunes. It's easy and it only takes about 10 seconds. If you have any questions or special guests that you would like to hear from, please send us an email to support at katherineplano.com.au and we will get right back to you. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at Catherine Plano. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. Until next week, please take care.